Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and we continue with our tight series of launches around the Voyager window. I sure hope you guys like a whole bunch of launches. Um, it, the trouble is that our missions aren't really getting fulfilled at the same time. It's sort of a delayed gratification thing. At least we get them on their way. But if you take a look at our Kerbal Alarm Clock, we've got a lot of missions. We're just waiting for them to reach their targets. And sometimes that's a little bit hard. It's somewhat more satisfying to launch a mission and then see it be completed, right? Uh, so this is... It's a little bit of a trick as far as making videos is concerned. Uh, just launching these missions and not knowing what's going to happen to them. Uh, so here we are though. We do still have a lot of work to do. And uh, perhaps uh, Mapset 1A would be a good one to start out on. We are on September 1st. We're going to have the Mars window there, and so what we need to do there is Mars Base 1 and this Mars Sample Return 2. So those are two launches that we should get off around this point here, actually. That's like the beginning of the window, if you will. But let's try Mapset 1A. It shouldn't take too long, hopefully. And it's a little bit short on Delta V, so because that's why we have maps at 2A. So we'll see whether we can actually get it to where it's supposed to go or not. Okay, here we are. And we don't need to line up with the moon. And I think from here on out, because we've got such a tight sort of situation, we've got so many launches to do, I'm not going to time warp to try and line up with the moon. It's probably not necessary. So SAS on. Throttle is up. And we've got 10 engines, so maybe that's about 10 engines worth of distance. Ignition. And launch. We're not too far off anyway, judging from the longitude of ascending node there. Okay, we are well past the speed of sound, approaching max Q, past 10 kilometers in altitude. Okay, booster set. And booster set looks clean. That's good. Um, Alright, that staging is a little bit off. Let's go like that. Okay, separation. And ignition. That's not exactly how that was supposed to work, but alright. We continue. I think we should be able to let go of the fairings now. We're in space and everything. They're big fairings, though. Oh, actually, I keep getting fooled by that. This is colored the same. I thought the fairings went all the way down, but they don't. Okay. We are okay. Okay, we're getting close to orbit now. And we should have about 3,000 meters per second left in the J2 stage to start us on our way to Jupiter. And I don't know whether this is going to stop at Jupiter or not. We'll have to see. Depends whether it can f whether it can find a good moon of Jupiter to orbit around. Okay, and this should be a pretty good orbit. Uh, 209 by 204. All right, uh, 3,054 meters per second. And let me plot for Jupiter. Okay, we have a plot for Jupiter. It's a little bit hard to slow down. I've aimed for Ganymede, but on top of the 7,088 we have here, uh, that would take another 5,000 to get a flyby, and it wouldn't take, uh, it would be orbit matching, so we wouldn't have too much more to do after that to make orbit, but still that's uh, more than 12,000, uh, maybe 12,100 ish, and we've only got 11,609, so maybe we'll divert to Callisto instead which will be easier to make orbit around. But right now, uh, I was gonna try and do this burn starting soon, but we don't have connection. Technically, I can start it out. We'll just pretend that 
the plot took care of it. Um, I did extend the communitrons. They're poking out there. But apparently not good enough right now. Strange. Now, I did delete some debris and some old missions. Perhaps those old missions were helping out with communication as well. Can't discount that. Like the old Lancers. If you have been watching this series from the very beginning, you might remember the Lancers. If you haven't, well, probably better off. Okay, well, it does not look like we're going to regain communication, but we can start this burnout. If it turns out that we don't complete it, uh, there are ways to solve that problem. But let's... Oh, I don't have RCS on. Hmm. Well, it says very stable. So, node and... Okay, we have an ignition. Hopefully in uh, around two minutes or so, we'll get communication back. We've got electric charge, so that's not a problem. Looking at it, uh, I guess we are sort of lacking... Hold on, oh, we don't have all, all this stuff up, but... Still, we're sort of lacking geosynchronous satellites, aren't we? I thought we had put... Well, we had that Geopack one right there, but that's not the geosynchronous satellite. Did we lose one along the way somewhere? Or did I accidentally delete it? Seems like I should have one. Well, we know something else we're going to need to do. Launch one of those geosynchronous satellites. Yeah, I substantially decreased the debris and some of the older missions, but maybe I was too vigorous on that. Is there a surface position that... well, the maneuver is there, and we should reacquire at Australia by the time we get there, so that's a hope. Well, we're going to cut it close, but we're not actually going to dip in the atmosphere, I think. It's getting really close. Ah, just above 140. And now we have to wait, um, which I guess is alright. Okay, we have reacquisition. Uh, the other two stages take a long time, so... But, well, yeah, let's stage off. Okay, and let's have RCS on, make sure there's... oh, there is unstable. Okay. RL-10. Well, that's another piece of space debris that we're going to have to deal with. This RL-10 is not going to be able to complete the burn, I don't believe. Okay, getting ready for staging. The RL-10 performed fine. We're getting pretty high up though now, and not very efficient. That's the trouble with long burns. Okay, set and ignition. And that's also going to be a bit of junk in interplanetary space. And this could take a while too. So we're probably going to be a bit off and need some correction. Okay, we have the makings of an encounter now. And... Uh, let's shut off there. That's looking okay for a start. It'll save us from extra corrections, but that's obviously not going to get us an encounter with Ganymede right now. I think our other MapSat one has already been aimed at Callisto, but we'll go with this for redundancy because we really don't have a choice. I don't think it's going to be suitable to go anywhere else. 
Yeah, it's going to take more than 4,000. Well, we'll make our decisions once we get into Jupiter SOI, but this is going to be a tough call. It could be like multiple fly... Oh, we accidentally got a Saturn encounter. I wasn't even trying for one, but apparently we've got one. Um, let's... I don't think scanning the surface of Saturn is going to be very helpful. But we might think about that. Hmm. So either we could use like Jupiter, Jupiter's moons to help us get into some sort of good situation with multiple flybys. Or we could like divert to Saturn, capture around it, and like try and hit Titan a few times. Though we'll need an inclination correction it looks like. Okay, I don't think that's helping too much. Alright, so I'm going to add a dummy maneuver in Jupiter SOI. And we'll make our decisions there. In two years. Okay, so that's our first mission away. Uh, next one, let's go for one of the Mars missions. Alright, so here we are with uh, Mars Sample Return Mission. And I'm just going to get on with it. Throttle is up, SAS is on. And uh, 12 engines, that's about 12 engines. Ignition! Uh, that was a second sound for no reason. I hope that's alright. All right, launch. Yeah, I heard one staging and then I heard another staging. That's weird. So our first attempt at a Mars sample return mission did not turn out so well. Hopefully this will be better. Uh, okay. Saw some shadows on the vehicle and I was a little bit worried about what was happening. I think it's all right. It's wobbling a bit though. Max Q and everything. All right, getting ready for booster separation. Booster set. And that looks fine. I'm gonna stage off the core stage before I do the fairings, remembering trouble with that before. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay. Well, I'm still sort of worried about the fairings, but... Let's get... Wow, we're really high, actually. I should have paid more attention to that. Uh, let's give them a go. Alright, they are clear. Come on, game. I think the game really wanted to kill my thing. Alright. Set some targets. I thought I'd have commutrons on here somewhere. Where would they be? Uh... Support. Well, I do have those little Sputnik antennae. I guess that'll do. Okay, making orbit and shut down. Four fifteen by one ninety three. All right, a bit high on the apoapsis, but at least we got here, and we have enough fuel in this stage. We have to get done with this stage anyway. And we definitely have enough fuel in this stage to uh, make the transfer. Let's just plot it out. Okay, here we are getting ready for the burn. Unfortunately, I, I hadn't locked the upper tanks. I hope they haven't been severely depleted. After all, our margins for the whole sample return thing are tight, but I think it's all right. I may regret that later. Also sort of regret 
uh, I don't know, the ablator is a good question. On the lower heat shield, maybe we don't need so much ablator. The one that's uh, dealing with the Mars part of this. Okay, I think uh, we should settle fuel down. Come on. And go. Yeah, uh, pretty cheap as far as LTB is concerned. Uh, less than 3,800 meters per second to get a uh, very close encounter with Mars. So the fact that our orbit was a little bit lopsided did not turn out to be a problem. Okay, stabilize, and shut down, 7.4 off, okay, I think our best bet is just to let the Astra stage handle the corrections, we're gonna get knocked by the decoupling anyway, so let's correct after we let go of that, so, after the game decides to let me do stuff, it's quick saving now. Uh, separation. Okay, so we are making our correction. It's 185 meters per second, which is rough, but uh, this stage is entirely meant for such corrections, so as long as we don't have to get rid of it before we get to Mars, it's alright. And even though it's a correction of 185 meters per second, it's really the last meter per second that, that does all the things. Okay, that's in Mars's atmosphere. Okay. Uh, oh yes, dummy maneuver in Mars SOI. That should take care of things. Three hundred and fifteen days, so it's a slow trip. Okay, and we have that on the list. So two Mars sample return missions. Uh, I think probably the other one had some issues, so this one is probably the one we're counting on. Uh, a little bit rough that it arrives first, but all right, that launch is set. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I'm getting set to launch our second attempt at an outer comm mission. If you remember, the first one was all glitchy and crazy and nothing seemed to solve it, including restarting the game. And But it was the only one. The other launches worked fine. So I'm going to try this outer comm and see if this one works out all right. Uh, it's possible it'll just all glitch out and then we'll have to launch something else. Let's find out. Okay, well, here it is. Once again, it's very bouncy, and I, I think I'm just going to launch it rather than try and time warp at all. Um, throw up, but yeah, of course, the problems happened after we start launch, but it's still a mystery if, um, if this is some systemic problem with this particular type of rocket. Okay, here we go. 20 engines, huh? Get some distance. Ignition. And launch. Up, oh, yeah. Something about this. Something about this in particular. And again, this isn't the exact same one. We had two other comms being built. Um, I don't suppose I could do like a... I don't know if I could reach a controller to do range safety. Ah, I can. Range safety darn thing. Well, at least we got a range safety in. I think there's this, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of debris there. Okay, well, that was somewhat expect. Well, I mean, it's still a little bit weird, isn't it? I mean, yes, it had happened before with the other one, but there was no particular reason for it. I had looked at the VAB and to check whether there was some reason for it to we got like that. Still have no idea. Anyway, back to Space Center. Alright, well we can uh, roll out our next mission, Exo Moon Explorer, and that's a big rocket, Nico 3340, 
and it's got to take f more than four days to roll out, um, which is sort of all right because it takes two days to recondition the launch pad from the previous launch. Um, probably that means that after this launch, it's got to take like four days to recondition the pad, which means after that we launch Mars Base 1, and uh, following that, we will probably have to launch this Ambassador mission, our final Ambassador mission. So that's the sequence of events. I'll start this rollout, but we've got another thing here. We've got uh, the Ganymede lander, our second lander, you know, the backup, arriving at Jupiter. But we've already landed in Ganymede, on Ganymede, uh, so we don't have to do that again, which means we have to aim for another moon. Uh, now, Europa is tougher. Ganymede is the third moon of Jupiter, Europa is the second, which means it takes a lot more energy to try and make orbit around Europa than Ganymede. Uh, Callisto is easier, but the reason why I mentioned Europa is because I had checked mission control and we had a Europa lander mission available. The question is also, if we take that, um, does it have to be a new craft? It says uncrewed Europa landing, uh, vessel state, landed, crew unmanned, collect science, and that's it. It doesn't say it has to be a new thing. Um, it does give us nine years to do it, so if this doesn't work out, we could send something else. We've got a window for Jupiter every year. So there's that. That is a positive. We also have an uncrewed Titan landing, but we'll we'll take care of that later. That The failure is a little bit steeper on that. The advance is huge, though. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should just blitz it. I mean, they're, they're giving us nine years. Um... They could fund a lot of things. Science data from space around Titan, 40 years, huh? Uh, but I'm, we have unlimited contracts. I guess that should just be done. Science data from surface of Titan, 8 years. Well, I, I, that's... Uh, it's ambitious, but so is this one. If we gotta take this one, we might as well take that one, huh? Okay. Well, here goes nothing. That one, Europa, and Titan. We aim to land on all of these things. But let's see. I've already picked it up, so we're going to do it at some point. The question is whether we do it with this Ganymede lander or not. And to decide that, we have to go over there and check whether it can make orbit around Europa and still land. Okay, well, taking a look at it, we've got 4,682 meters per second here, and that's locked up, and then that has the fuel for landing. Well, fuel for landing on Ganymede. Not entirely sure what it takes to land on Europa. Um, off uh, 7,305 meters per second. Okay, let's just lock that up for now so it doesn't leak. And so let's let's get into Jupiter SOI here. We've got our RTGs, so we don't need to worry about orientation. Oh yes, um, one one thing, I did do ignore max temp. Let me undo that. That's standard procedure now, with these uh, long distance missions. We flung twenty tons to Jupiter. Still fairly impressive. I mean, basically, our launcher launched what proton launches to low Earth orbit all the way to Jupiter. This is pretty good. Now, we can't go too far, otherwise we overdo it, and uh, so we can't really finish what we're doing here, because it's going to take 87 days to get to Jupiter periapsis, and... Apart from everything else, uh, some of our Kerbals on our stations would starve. We need to watch out for that. We need to send something soon. I mean, 25 days is a little bit tight. Okay, but... Mm, focus view. Really hate those uh, warp to periapsis and that sort of thing. When I'm trying not to time warp. Okay, Europa is here. So let's say... 
we do one maneuver to get closer to actually you know what um, well, no, it'd still be better to get closer to Europa. We'd get a help from Jupiter with capture and everything. So, um, I don't want to do it immediately because we might decide to go for Callisto instead if it turns out that Europa would take too much. Okay, and here. And again, uh, if you try and make orbit close to Jupiter and then burn out, you know, increase your orbit so that you can hit Europa, it ends up being the same thing or worse. So, okay, right there we have matched orbits uh, pretty much. And so, how much did that cost? 6,400. So, I guess we can land at Europa. Let's say we've change this so that we actually have you will know, take a few maneuvers okay there is a artificial encounter which means that it costs more than it ought to um, that's 5200 so uh, think of it as a worst case scenario okay uh, that'll cost 2100 so if we sum it up, the worst case scenario, it, it looks doable to me. So okay, we're going to try and land on Europa. And let's do this maneuver first. We should have a small reaction wheel on this. I'm going to shut down... Oh, right that's not a good idea okay I'm gonna shut down two engines but it's actually gonna take longer so it's not doing what I want it to do I forgot about signal delay there's no RCS on this stage so that's part of the downside but you know a bit more efficient Okay, that's close enough. Wow, they're not gimbling much either. Alright, that should do the trick. Okay, so we now have a little tangency. 1.66 with respect to Europa is probably the best we could do. It's close. I mean,. Yep, pretty darn close. Well, we'll want it a little bit loose. But we'll just leave it be for now. And add that as an alarm. Okay, so that's all set. We are going to try to land on Europa, folks. And it's a pretty lucrative contract if it works. So we've got that going for us. And we've had a few good launches. Uh, one outer comm launch that didn't work out. But that was not due to my fault, darn it. But anyway, so we will continue next time. Next time, hopefully, we'll finish up all the Voyager window launches next time. And then we're going to have to resupply our stations, both of them. And so maybe we should bring the crew back. I've, I am building the spacecraft. The, uh, two, the, that Orpheus is for low Earth orbit and that one for the moon. So we could do a crew rotation, and it's definitely overdue. So the plan is... Exo Moon Explorer, obviously, then Mapsat to A. Well, m m m yeah, Mars Base One, then Mapsat to A, then the Ambassador mission. So that's the sequence. All right. Well, with this thing spinning around, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.